Hello and welcome to a video that I've been thinking about making for a while and that is a tour of my Lego room. Now, unlike some other people, I'm not lucky enough to get an entire room devoted to my Lego, but my girlfriend has very graciously allowed that half of the spare room uh, can be taken over by my Lego, um, although I try to keep it as tidy as possible um, to stop things overflowing so it is usable. So here we are. I will just give you a quick pan around all the areas. So starting on the far left, we have got my building and review desk. So this is where I sit down and actually put things together and uh, film a lot of my videos. You can also see I've got loads and loads of drawers containing all my Lego. We'll have a closer look in a bit just to show you what is in all of them. Um, but you should be able to see as well, we've got my uh, 8080, got my, uh, not Lego, but my pop vinyl Grogu there, along with my Dunkin' Egg Bricks logo. Also got my um, Bag End set, um, I've got a review for that. All my Harry Potter things up there, including my Hogwarts Castle, which you can see up on the top. Obviously, you've all seen that before. And then on the lower shelves, you've got more drawers over there. And then you've got a few of my other things, my Hogwarts Express and a couple of other Harry Potter things, as well as my Star Wars shelf. And then panning all the way over here, we've got my Black Seas Barracuda sitting on a uh, little mock-up of water that I made, which I'll show you in a second. And then the uh, what is really the oldest part of my Lego room, which is these drawers from Ikea. Now, I have had these for absolutely years. Um, I think I started off with literally just the plastic drawers and now my parents realised that they uh, could put them into some um, storage that you can uh, slide in. This is all from Ikea and I've used them ever since. Unfortunately, they're not uh, the best for the way that I like to organise my Lego, so they won't be hanging around forever. However, I'm using them for now and I'm pretty happy with them. OK, so let's uh, get off the tripod and we will go in and have a closer look at everything. So we're back with shaky handheld now, and we'll start back over on the left again just to get in a bit more detail. Now, um, how do I sort my Lego? So, until uh, probably the beginning of the first lockdown here in the UK, so that was March 2020, um, I sorted my Lego in a very different way, and it had been sorted that way since I was probably about 10, um, the point where there was enough Lego where it needed some serious sorting, and that was sorted by colour. So if you have a smaller collection of Lego, that's probably the sensible way to do it. Uh, sort by colour, and then things are a lot easier to find. Obviously, the step below that is just to not bother sorting at all and put everything in a tub, which can be really good fun if you're just looking to pick out random stuff and create something fun with it. But uh, if, like me, what you want to do is uh, either design stuff on the computer and then try and build it, or you have a clear idea already of what kind of pieces are available, it can actually be much more useful to have those pieces to hand. So what I did uh, just a little over a year ago is I decided to completely change how I sorted my Lego. So my Lego is now sorted by piece type. So, for instance, this stack here is all of the slopes that I have. Starting from the very top, you've got small ones like the uh, single and double cheese wedges, um, the um, pyramid type ones, the rounded ones like this one you can see just here, the ones with the grills in them, anything small basically. And then moving on down, you've got anything that has a one by two footprint. So some of them are the smaller ones and some are taller. Anything with a two by two footprint. Anything sort of um, two by N going side to side. Um, anything bigger than that, basically. Inverted slopes. Large inverted slopes. All the curved slopes. And then basically any slope that's too big to fit in any other drawer. So that's the kind of way that I'm sorting. Obviously, you can see things haven't been sorted by colour. That would be the next step beyond that would be to sort by shape and by colour. I don't have quite a large enough collection to actually do that. And the drawers that I would need to do that would be very, very small. Um, one place where I've sorted perhaps slightly differently is actually this cabinet just here. You've probably seen it in the background a lot of a lot of my videos. Now, this is all of my Technic stuff. So... I'm not a big Technic collector. Um, I don't know if I've ever actually bought a Technic set in my life, 
but somehow I've ended up with a lot of Technic pieces. Some of those have been given to me um, by friends and relatives who were done with their Lego and didn't want it anymore, and some obviously come in just regular system sets. So I've organised these for uh, just ease of grabbing them. So on the top row we've got bars and associated pieces of all different sizes going up as you go along. Then underneath that we have got uh, pins. And then we have got various connectors. I won't show you all of them because it would take a long, long time. Going through, we've got bricks of various types, uh, bushings, gears, large bricks, and then down to lift arms, and then plates and things. So uh, this is actually designed as a tool chest. I um, can't remember where I got it from now, but it's uh, a rather not a tool chest. It's designed to have screws and bolts and nuts and washers and things but I found that it actually works perfectly because it's got lots of drawers and also a lot of them, uh, I'll find one here, have uh, these removable dividers just here so you can separate things out even more and I found that very useful. Like I say I'm not a Technic builder but I do find myself needing Technic pieces um, so it's very useful to have them all in one place. Coming around here, I've got more drawers. Um, I believe these drawers are from B&Q here in the UK. It's just a big um, home, um, home improvement and DIY store. And they just sell these fairly generic drawers, which are not too expensive. Um, the way that these drawers come, they've actually got little plastic tabs on either side, which stop you from pulling them out. But I actually go through and I snap them all off so the drawers can come out nice and easily. And that just means I can pull one out, pop it on the desk, build what I need to build, and then put it away. Now, um, what have I got in this section here? So this first stack is a bit of a mishmash. I've got cylinders, cones, plants, dishes, um, panels. I think I've got overflow Technic stuff in that bottom drawer there. Just moved some of the mess out of the way. I've just been sorting some pieces out for my next build. This, you probably will have seen my minifigures on. And again, this is somewhere that I've used Technic. And this is just my little stand that allows me to spin two minifigures around at once. Really simple build. Um, if you do want to know how I've built that, I might do a, a little video or an Instagram post or something on it. Um, but just let me know if that's something you want. Then coming over to here, we have got plates of all different shapes and sizes. We've got small round plates, larger round plates. We have got jumpers, ones with clips. Um, some of these are a little bit mixed up because I didn't have quite enough. So you've got rails and ladders and all sorts of things. And going down, you get the idea basically. Um, so this just enables me, especially as I sit just here, to be able to just reach over, grab a drawer, open it, and then use the pieces. Um, some of these are uh, a little bit random and they were basically done so that I could fill as much space as possible. Um, but I've tried to keep things um, associated. So you've got modified plates there, regular plates there, and then large regular plates in these drawers just here. So it, it all makes a certain degree of sense, at least to me. And uh, it's my collection, so uh, hopefully as long as I know my way around it, um, that shouldn't be a problem. Just taking a step back here, um, as well as all the drawers and things that I've been getting to make improvements, one other thing that I wanted to get was some better shelves. So, uh, previously, you will have seen my Hogwarts was displayed slightly differently. It was actually displayed on top of these three drawers just here, or these three sacks of drawers. Now, uh, obviously, there's not much surface area just here, so I actually constructed a shelf, which is just there, which went across the top with some legs just there. And that was absolutely fine. But as my Hogwarts gets bigger, um, especially as it gets bigger in this direction, which is what I'm working on, the central tower will be just here. Um, I'm gonna need some more space. So I invested in some better shelves. These are from Ikea, uh, Ikea Ivar shelves. They've been around for years. I had loads of them growing up and they're really dependable and really modular. These are, I think they're 124 centimetres tall and 50 centimetres deep. So it's given me plenty of space for my Hogwarts over here. Various other sort of miscellaneous Harry Potter associated things. Just ignore the Batmobile for the moment. And these really help me in organising and displaying. I haven't uh, fully moved everything over from where it was. They were in a couple of different bits of shelves, but I've managed to get them all together in one now. Um, so there's still a bit of tidying up to make it a nice display piece, but I really like the fact that I have loads more space now to display things. Um, even gives me a shelf for my Star Wars stuff, another shelf there full of instructions and things. Um, the eventual plan is to get 
one more set of these shelves, which will extend out over here and allow me to uh, sadly say goodbye to these drawers, which I've had for a long time, but which uh, don't really fit my purpose anymore. I've tried quite a few different methods for separating pieces within um, a single larger container. So um, for instance, this is one of these smaller boxes and it just has two by two bricks in it. But then when you get up to one like this, I've got one by ones, uh, one by twos, although that's actually in the wrong place, um, and one by three bricks. And they are all separated by these containers. As you can see, these aren't the best, um, but they have served their purpose for now. And once I'm able to get rid of these bigger drawers, I will uh, find a better solution. Um, one solution that I did actually find was using takeaway boxes. So all these are sort of sandwich boxes and they just sit within the drawer and allow me to separate different types of bricks. The disadvantage, of course, is they leave a lot of space just here where I don't really want to put stuff because uh, it'll just get lost and rattle around. One solution that shouldn't be discredited, though, if I take you back over to here, is the good old plastic baggie. Now, uh, if anybody orders things off Bricklink, you will get tons of these. Um, and if not, they're very cheap to buy. And actually, for things like this, so for instance, these are minifigure weapons. I've got just so many Harry Potter wands, um, smaller pieces like taps and things bag of flames and accessories, anything like that, um, I find that these bags are actually really helpful. Obviously, it's a little bit more difficult to find stuff within them, but if you're not, uh, again, tipping them out or just searching through them, it's okay. Um, and they, again, don't take up as much space in the drawer, but I could fit probably twice the amount in there that's actually in there at the moment. Um, that is just a drawer full of random stuff that I've not sorted yet. And that's another one where I've used these plastic takeaway containers. I bought them new, <laughs> so they're not ones that had food in them. Um, but yeah, they really work and they just mean that everything stays mostly separate. So that's really it as far as my Lego setup goes. Uh, one last thing to show you is just this little thing that I've created for my Black Seas Barracuda. Obviously, I think I mentioned that I've taken the island apart, but I didn't want to uh, waste all of these big 16 by 16 plates and these large wedge plates as well so i've just created a little sort of diorama um just got the shark at the back there and i've added some different pieces in to make it look like there's a wake behind the ship it's very crude um but i really like it and it just means that from a distance anyway i think that displays really well at least when you uh, ignore the random pieces that i haven't put away yet so that was just a quick look around at my lego setup and how i organize it um if you've got any more questions then please drop them in the comments down below if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more in the future when i do end up changing things or adapting things um, then please let me know i'm planning on doing another overview video of my hogwarts castle so if anybody's got any questions about uh Hogwarts or my design or to be honest about anything else then please do drop them down in the comments as well and I will kind of combine that overview video with a, a sort of mini Q&A just so I can answer any of your questions that uh, you've got at the moment so thank you very much for watching please leave a comment or subscribe to my channel for more and I will see you in the next one thanks bye